Good morning, my lord. I do apologize for waking you up so early. Uh, Duke Lowenthal was adamant on having an early start. I hope you had a restful sleep. Ah, uh, me? <laughs> oh, uh, yes, I had a restful sleep as well. Thank you for asking, my lord. Mm, now that you're awake, shall I brief you on the schedule for the week? We didn't get a chance to go over it since you retired to your chambers quite early after we arrived yesterday. Uh, oh, um, forgive me. I forgot. You didn't have anything for dinner yesterday, so I was worried you'd, you know, be hungry in the morning. And so I wanted to give you this. Breakfast won't be for a long while, and I wouldn't want you to grow hungry. Um, so, uh, here they are. Mm. I managed to bake a few treats the night prior. I do hope you enjoy my meager baked goods. I know what you like, and I didn't have the time to go out to the bakery. So, I apologize if they're not up to your standards. Oh, yes. It took a little bit of time, but mainly because I'm not used to how this kitchen functions. Do you like them? <laughs> oh, thank you, my lord. Uh, all right, if I may, let's go ahead and go over the schedule then. As you know, the Grand Duke, your father, has ordered you to stay here for the next week. Each day you'll have one or two significant events, with the largest at the end of the week being the social ball held for Duke Lowenthal's daughter, Lady Aaron. I believe it's her coming of age. Mm. Actually, you should be meeting Lady Aaron this morning at breakfast. Uh, anyway, today you'll have a tour of the Lowenthal lands. Hmm. Yes, uh, Duke Lowenthal does own quite a few businesses in town. Uh, he probably wants you to visit his establishments, so that way you can report their grandness to the Great Duke. Mm, I believe the only other event is... Ah, uh, right. This was recently added to the schedule. I apologize, since I understand that you're not privy to this sort of thing. Lady Aaron has requested a private audience with you. Um, actually, this is not the only private audience you'll have this week. Several notable ladies have asked to meet with you. On Tuesday, you'll be meeting with Marquise Lostra's two daughters, Lady Faye and Lady Mara. On Thursday, Earl Evers has also asked you to meet his daughter, Lady Christina. On Saturday, Duchess Habercorn asked you to accompany her to a tea party thrown by Viscountess Carina who also has an appointment with you later that day as well. As always, you are ever popular, my lord. After all, you've reached a marriageable age. I understand it can be quite tedious to meet with these ladies, but perhaps one will catch your eye? After all, they are quite all beautiful and graceful. Though, I, I'm sure that if you don't find any lady to your liking here, your father will be sure to fill your schedule once again with many more private meetings. He did let you off the hook the entire year, after all. It's already been a year since your coming-of-age ceremony. Uh, hmm? Me? Ah, uh, uh, well, uh, my coming-of-age was but a few months ago. I believe I'm only a year younger than you or so. That's why I was absent for a short week, yes. Oh, you remember that? Uh, well, oh, indeed. I had to visit my father. Uh, yes, I am the daughter of Baron Clark. Uh, uh, oh? I'm surprised you're asking this question. Uh, um, well... I suppose, to answer. Yes, uh, I have been receiving a reasonable amount of marriage proposals, though 
I have yet to accept any, and doubt I will any time soon. In all honesty, if I may speak frankly, I would much rather stay in your household as a maid. It's much less tiresome than the life of a noblewoman, though sooner or later my parents will ask me to be married for their benefit, of course, and- uh, uh, Oh, I apologize, I- didn't mean to speak so informally around you. I must have been rambling for some time. Ah, uh, is it truly okay? I mean, I suppose we are alone after all. And I haven't gotten to speak with you like this in ages. You've been busy ever since you had your coming-of-age ceremony after all. Um, now, anyway, where were we? Right, so I suppose, despite my protests, my parents will force me to accept one of these gaudy proposals. However, I think I'd rather hold off until my sister gets married to that Marquise of hers. Uh, I wouldn't want to take any more of the spotlight away from her. Mm, I... I... Oh, I... <laughs> I didn't realize you'd ask such a question, but... Since we are close, I can answer. Um, hmm. I suppose this is quite a bit awkward, but I do indeed have someone who's caught my eye. But nevertheless, their station is much, much higher than mine. I could never wish to even be with someone like that. I'm sure they'll be getting married eventually as well. They're quite handsome, a genius, and popular at that. I I've known them for so long, and yet I, I must keep them at an arm's length. My feelings would just be rather troublesome. Someone... Uh, I like someone who is rather unattainable for someone like me. Ah... Uh, I apologize, you must be sick of me whining on about my love. Uh, anyway, I'd still rather much stay with you than to be married off, and that's the truth. After all, I've been here since I was ten. <laughs> yes, it has indeed been quite a long time, hasn't it? It was a golden opportunity for some no-name noble family. <sighs> I suppose I haven't really told you all about this, but... My sister, she needed to be sent to the academy, since she held the highest amount of potential in terms of intelligence and looks. Uh, her mannerisms are perfect, uh, and I was sent here to earn extra money for them. It's a great honor, after all, for any noble lady to work for someone as great as the Grand Duke. And, of course, I... I... Never mind. It's fine. I'm happy to help out my family. It is my duty, after all, is it not? Though I suppose it can get rather sickening sometimes. Uh, I agree. It wasn't especially fair, but then again, my sister, she deserves it. Uh, anyway... Of course, I didn't know that the first thing that would happen to me once I arrived at the palace would to be injured. <laughs> Remember, you let go of that wooden sword of yours and it went flying at my head. At least now you remember to grip the handle tightly. In fact, I heard some rumors floating around that you bested Swordmaster Ronin during a duel. <laughs> You're amazing, aren't you? Truly, I could never wish for a better master. Truly, you are a genius. That reminds me, on Tuesday you'll be meeting with the Captain of the Knights. This will be a wonderful opportunity for you. He always dreamed of battles and glorious sword fights. You always talked of them when you bothered me during laundry duty. <laughs> Perhaps bothered is the wrong word. Annoyed or pestered would sound more accurate. Though, I do miss those days. Mm. Oh, let's get back to briefing you on the schedule. As much as I enjoy talking to you like this, it's still rather inappropriate to speak so informally between a maid and someone of your station. Uh, or... 
perhaps not. Anyway, on Wednesday, you only have one event, and that would be meeting with all the local lords to discuss the finances for winter. Your father wants you to learn firsthand, so you'll be in charge of the delegation during that meeting. On Thursday, you're free to do what you like, other than the meeting with Lady Christina. Friday, you'll be taking a visit to the local merchants in town. They intend on throwing a feast and appreciation for the Grand Duke's efforts during the war. It's also the same time as the Rites of Kaish Festival. Though, I suspect your father will recommend a lady to accompany you. That has yet to been determined, however, so please, pick someone before your father does. <laughs> I'd rather you pick someone you fancy instead of one for political reasons. Again, excuse my lack of manners, but I'm just looking out for you. It would make me rather upset. Mm. Perhaps that's not the right word. Mm, uncomfortable? But I, I just don't want you to have a loveless marriage, is all. Uh, the rites of Kaish will be extremely scenic, and it will be a wonderful date for any lady that had caught your eyes. Anyway, on Saturday, you'll be having appointments with Duchess Havercorn and Viscountess Karina. This is most likely an extension to introduce you to their own daughters, Lady Ori and Lady Rose, respectively. Finally, your big day is Sunday. It's a social ball, as I had mentioned before, being held in the evening for Lady Aaron's coming of age. She'll likely ask you to accompany her. <laughs> be prepared. I'm sure you'll be swarmed since you're quite the desirable bachelor. Well, uh, that's it for the briefing, my lord. Uh, shall we go ahead and get you dressed? Breakfast is an hour, but Duke Lowenthal would like you to meet him in 30 minutes. Would you like me to assist you this morning, or would you prefer to dress yourself? Ah, I see. Are you a little shy? <laughs> Don't be. It's my honor as your maid to assist you. Hmm? <laughs> Sully, my honor as a noble lady. What do you ever mean by that? I told you, I'm a maid. That's my job, my dear lord. Although this would be the first time assisting someone other than a noble lady. <laughs> Suit yourself. Just put on your dress shirt and pants and I'll handle the rest. Don't worry, I'll turn around. Here, let me lay out your clothes. Ah, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. But, my lord, I do have a question. Have other maids never dressed you before? Huh? And then what's the difference with me? <sighs> Perhaps it's because I've known you for so long. <laughs> I'm not peeking, my lord. I'm covering my eyes. <sighs> How silly. Fine, fine. Are you done? All right. Uh, you're looking very dashing in this new suit. Not that you don't always. You know, the Grand Duke ordered a whole new wardrobe in preparation this week. Ah, uh, here's the matching ascot. I hope it's to your liking. Let me put it on for you, my lord. Mm, would you mind bending down slightly? You're quite taller than I am. Mm. Thank you, my lord. <laughs> ah, there we go. Let me assist you with the jacket as well. <laughs> ah, I hope it is to your liking. Please go ahead and look in the mirror. <laughs> ah, oh, I guess. You look... Very handsome, my lord. You live up to the rumors, after all. Dashing and the most desirable bachelor in the lands. Apart from the crown prince, that is. Anyway, it seems like we've run short on time, my lord. It's time for your meeting with Duke Lowenthal. Please, make your way to his office, if you may. Uh, oh, and also, my lord? Uh, um... <laughs> Never mind. Just have a nice breakfast, and please be kind to Lady Aaron. Who knows? She may become the future Grand Duchess. I shall see you later, but...
please do call for me if you should ever need it. I am your personal maid, after all. Goodbye, my lord, and have a good day. Ah, uh, my lord, you called for me? It is nearly time for your meeting with the merchants. You have but three hours left. Will you be needing my assistance with anything? Hmm? Ah, yes. The garments you ordered have arrived. I see. So you've chosen a lady to accompany you already. That is very good news. I'm sure the Grand Duke will be pleased. But you did order it quite late. Did you wish to send this as a gift to the lady you have chosen for tonight? Ah, I see. Oh, what a state do they reside in. We would have to depart very quickly to get them this dress with ample time for the lady to get ready. This estate? Ah, perhaps you have taken a fancy to Lady Erin. I have seen you two, well, grow closer. I congratulate you, my lord. I'm glad that you found someone to your liking. I'm sure she will be delighted. Huh? If not Lady Erin, then who? I don't understand, my lord. You can't possibly mean this dress is for me. You want me to what? My lord, I advise you to see the avoidance tactics of yours. Her father will be very angry. Uh, why do you always wish to drag me into your odd shenanigans? Well, I cannot argue with my lord. So, very well. I shall pose as your lady tonight. However, after this, you must promise me to stop your silly games after this. I want you to find a wife you will love and you will be happy with. Besides, to go out on a night like this with your maid of all people is ridiculous. But I will accept this dress, since it is from you. Thank you, my lord. I humbly and graciously accept your gift. Well, if that is all, I will get ready, and I shall meet you by the gate, my lord. Mm, I do hope I look somewhat decent. I don't know. I do like this dress, though. I'm surprised he pinpointed my taste so well. It's simple. Uh, what have I gotten myself into? This is... This is all a little too indulgent. Unless... Uh, no, no, I'm just being silly. I'm just being used as an excuse, is all. E yes, that's all. <laughs> Don't give it too much thought. Minea, you're just a servant. Nothing more. Just a servant. Well, let's go. Ah, my lord, I apologize for being late. I hope I did not make you wait too long. Uh oh, I suppose I am right on time. Well, shall we depart then? I will accompany you to the banquet as well as the lantern viewing. There are a few activities I have noted down that should take up enough time to have your father be successfully convinced that you've, well, found yourself a lady. I hope that I will suffice as a replacement for a real noble lady. I tried my best to look the part, but it's rather difficult. I haven't dressed up since my coming of age, and... Well, uh, let's get going. We have ample time before we must arrive, but there's no use in standing here. My lord, if you may. Uh, oh, right. Um, I'm the lady this time, aren't I? This feels so incredibly wrong. Then I shall enter the carriage first. Thank you, my lord. Hmm. This is my first time in such a luxurious carriage. Ah, 
Yes, I suppose it would make sense to splurge on the lady you fancy. I suppose you're playing the role of a love-struck lord tonight. Very well. I shall play my part as well as I can. Shall I just pretend that you're one of the suitors that have proposed to me? <laughs> I shall play along with this game of yours. I suppose it could be a little fun. But remember what I said. You must stop these silly games after tonight. All right. I wish not to find you in anguish after your father finds out you've yet to find a wife and then forces it upon you. Then again, I'm playing the same game with my parents. It always seems like they want to get rid of me as soon as possible. And yet my sister... Uh, never mind me. Just some useless thoughts. Ah, have you ever experienced the streets during the rites subkite? All across the land, people cast their wishes up above toward the heavens. It's quite a beautiful sight. I should tell you, the first time I had ever seen the lanterns was a little while before I'd come here. Although it's somewhat of an unsavory tale. Shall I indulge you while we travel toward the town center? Very well, then. I was but the age of seven or so. My dearest sister had been invited to a tea party with the first and second princess. Ah, right. Now that you mention it, my father, Baron Clark, isn't exactly the biggest noble, so it must seem kind of odd to be close with the Imperial family. Well, apparently, we are distant cousins of the late Empress, bless her soul. That is why my sister was invited. Actually, were you not somewhat close to the First Princess? Ah, I see. I suppose things have been quite busy ever since your coming of age, hmm. Though, you still seem to make time for the Crown Prince. Then again, you work very closely. I've never seen the First Princess myself, though I've heard some unsavory rumors. Regardless, let me continue. My parents said that I was far too young to attend a tea party like that, despite apparently being the same age as the princess. My sister was also only a year or so older than I, and so I found it unfair. I snuck into a compartment in my sister's carriage and snuck into the party. However, I was soon caught by her. She told me, stay in the carriage, or else I'll report you to our parents. <laughs> yeah. So I was left to my own devices in a stuffy carriage, and when we arrived back to our estate, she tattled on me anyway. My parents were horrified and locked me away in a room as punishment. Since my room was at the very top of the house, there was a very large window that opened up there. Within a week of being locked up, I was, well, bored, staring out the window, waiting for my punishment to be over. However, just then, the skies were lit with lanterns floating toward the heavens. My parents had left the house to celebrate the festival, and so I snuck out the window just to stare at the sky. Although unsavory, the rites of Kaish have always been my favorite. It gave me hope. <laughs> but I'm sure you've seen the lanterns above yourself. Though this will probably be the first time you'll really see them up close. They're beautiful. I really did hope that the first time you'd go with the lady you fancy. Though I suppose there's always next year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're always such a joker. I told you, you can't get me to go along with any more of your shenanigans. I'm not going with you again. At least not if avoiding marriage is your only reason. Huh? <sighs> Never mind. But after tonight, I will only perform the duties a maid should be doing. <sighs> but alas, we've already arrived at the banquet. Take your arm? Ah, uh, you are right, aren't you? Well, let's play the part, shall we, my lord? Ah, uh, well, let's hope the Grand Duke will be fooled by that performance, hmm? <laughs> I haven't been to an event like that in forever. It was quite grand. Hmm... 
I suppose they are quite appreciative of the Grand Duke's achievements, hmm? Though, I've heard as of late that although the battles have ceased because of the truce, I heard it will end as soon as the kingdom of Olami is dealt with. Hmm. Although Olami hasn't done any direct fighting to either Penkos or Kianos, it seems as if a larger threat is occurring. Although it's wrapped up quite secretly so no one knows what's going on. Uh, enough about politics. You get enough of that while you're working. How about we finally enjoy the festival, hmm? Uh, right, my plans for tonight. Well, we made quite the impression at the banquet. I'd like to visit the stalls. Perhaps you'd find something you like? <laughs> There's many cheap deals as long as you know how to haggle. There uh, will also be a performance by the Pengos Desbian Guild. Mm, finally, we'll go to this one hill in the area, release some lanterns. <laughs> that should suffice, I think. Well then, let's get this fake, uh, date started, shall we? Uh, it's been quite a while since I've been out and about. Uh, the dress? <laughs> yes, my lord. It's beautiful. Thank you. When we get back to the estate, I'll bake some treats for you again in return. Mm hmm? What do you mean? It's no hassle. It feels as if it's no work at all if it's for you. After all, I love serving you as your maid. Yes, as your maid. You're the kindest nobleman I've served. Even my family is harsher on me when I make mistakes. <laughs> ah, look at this hairpin. It's quite pretty, isn't it? <sighs> Even during the rites of Christ, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? I can barely afford something like this. I have expenses. Ah, uh, yes, your family pays me very well. Do not worry, my lord. It's just that my pay goes to my family. They need it for my sister's dowry. No, I can't argue. They, they need it. If my sister gets married to the Marquise, she'll need a large dowry. Once they get married, my family will be receiving support from the Marquise. Then I won't have to pay anymore. I'll be free to live on my own, to continue working at your estate. No, you need not worry. It'll only, well, perhaps another month or two. She'll get married soon. Until then, I must keep working. Uh, well, let's move on. Oh, but the street is good for shopping when the festival isn't going on. Lots of cafes, jewelry shops, boutiques. Perfect place to go on a date. <laughs> well, that's what I hear, anyway. Ah, look, there's the performance I was talking about. It's quite amazing that they're willing to perform for free. They're quite famous, aren't they? Ah, of course, it's this story. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, it's quite the famous love story. I'm surprised you haven't heard of it. It's about the origins of the rites of Kaish, actually. Ah, well, the gods, Ora and Ea, they were the ones who blessed our great Empress Era. Well, yes. According to the legends, Aura and Era were both humans who sought to cleanse the corrupt gods from above. However, after a long battle, they both suffered wounds beyond comprehension, and so, before dying, they cast out a wish on a burning piece of paper. They both wished for one another to live on, and somehow, miraculously, they transcended to the heavens as powerful gods and sealed the corrupt ones away. And that is the origin of the festival. Although we've evolved to releasing our wishes toward Aura and Ea instead of burning scraps toward the earth. And, although this is all but a legend, who knows what truly happened? All we know is that their love was powerful and that their wishes were granted, one way or another. Oh well, I suppose it's time we continue this little ritual, hmm? <laughs> Let's stop by the Alta Hill. Merchants will be there selling lanterns and... The spot itself is the best for viewing the town. Uh, yes, the lanterns will continue to be released up until midnight, I believe. Well, I think this is a suitable spot. Shall we write our wishes? 
It's been quite a while since I've done this myself. Mm hmm. What should I wish for? Ah, I know. <laughs> ah, there we go. <laughs> it's a very simple wish. Well, I wished for your happiness is all. <laughs> of course, your happiness goes above my own. I told you, I'm fine. Well, what about your wish? Mm -hmm. You won't tell me? Why not? It's not as if there's any bad superstitions with revealing your wish. Very well, my lord. Regardless, I hope your wish comes true. Let's release them. <laughs> okay, here we go. On the count of three. One, two, three. Ah, there they go. Bless Aura and Ea, gods above. May our wishes be blessed. <laughs> beautiful? Uh, yes, the sky is very beautiful indeed. Huh? Why are you chuckling? Mm, well, whatever you say, I suppose. <sighs> I wish I could stay in this moment forever with you. I mean, it's just so peaceful and you're constantly busy. I'm glad that I came with you today. It seemed to clear your mind is all I meant. Well, enough of that. I suppose we should head back to the mansion. It's getting quite late and it's a tad chilly. Thank you again, my lord. It was a wonderful outing. I hope my company tonight was not displeasing. But remember what I said, all right? Uh, well, my lord, uh, the carriage has arrived. Please enter if you may. Oh, right, I forgot. I suppose we should continue this little charade until we arrive then. Very well. <laughs> Thank you, my lord. Uh, let us go to the estate. And after this, we will return to our normal positions. Yes? Very well, then. In the meantime, I think I'll enjoy this a little more till we arrive. Ah! Good afternoon, my lord. It's been quite a few hours since I've seen you. You were in the garden for the majority of the day, were you not? Well then, I hope you enjoyed your few hours in the garden. Did you do anything fun? Or were you studying spells again? Ah, the roses again, hmm? Well, Lowenthal's rose garden is quite beautiful after all. But make sure not to turn all of them blue. <laughs> Ah, if I had free time, I could probably spend a good long while there with a book or two before getting bored. Ah, <sighs> mm. Oh, <laughs> I would have accompanied you, but I was running around with Mistress Lincoln arranging things. Today is the big day. Lady Erin must be thrilled. It is her coming of age, after all. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, I, I told you. I had my coming of age but a while ago. Oh, heavens no. Even as a noble lady myself, I only received a bit of money from my parents to spend. It would have been a dream to have a whole party, but, well, that's just how it is, my lord. Anyway, you've already washed up, right? Well then, let's get you ready for the ball in the time being. You only have an hour or two before it begins. Hmm, let's see. Here's all the suits you brought with you. Choose whichever one pleases you, and I'll help you get ready afterward. You have quite a few selections. Huh? Uh, me? But, but, my lord, how could I possibly choose for you? N no, no, I, I couldn't. Uh, well, if you keep insisting like that... Fine, you're always like this. You know I can't say no to you when you're acting like that. Very well. Let's see, let's see. 
Um, just a question out of curiosity. Do you wish to be engaged with Lady Aaron? Because if so, it would be best if you wore this one with the gold trim and the white. I was attending to Lady Aaron a little while ago and took a peek at her dress for this evening. It was quite stunning and has matching gold embellishments that would go quite well with the suit. You two would show up to the ball wearing nearly matching clothes and, well, that coincidence would cause quite the stir. Eh? It... Really? Ah, uh, well, I've just seen you two quite close lately, and, well, I thought you two must have shared affections. Uh, so someone else, is it? Ah, uh, another lady that has captured your heart, then. Huh. Well... I must say, she's very lucky to be chased after by someone like yourself. Have you talked to your father about this lady of yours? Ah. Uh, mm, well, you better do it soon. I doubt he will be patient for much longer. Anyway, as you're not trying to gain Lady Aaron's affections, I think you'd look very handsome in this navy one with the silver. You've always looked good in blue, after all. Oh, well, your mother, Madame Ladle, has always dressed you in blue as you were growing up, and, well, excuse my words, but you were quite the attractive boy. Huh? And now? Ah, well, of course, my lord, you are quite attractive. I've told you time and time again that you are one of the most attractive and eligible bachelors in the land. Now, perhaps you don't know this, but the gossip magazines are always speculating who you are to be engaged with. Would you like to hear some? <laughs> well, excuse me while I put this on, I'll tell you a bit. Uh, last week, a, a rumor was going around that you were in meetings with Lady Cornelia. The springtime romance, they called it. It's her first spring since she became of age, and... Rumors are rumors. But everyone knows that Lady Cornelia is in love with Lord Adel. This week they suspected it was you and Miss Rose. It's all silly, uh, I know. Uh, uh, one last button before you move, my lord. Mm, besides, you're always busy helping the Crown Prince. And, well, I happen to be around you all the time. There's hardly a moment where I don't see you, so... Makes me wonder, where did you meet this mysterious lady of yours? Who is she? Uh, huh? Wh wait, where are you going? I still need to help you finish getting dressed. Wait, wait, let, let me just adjust your tie and your hair as well, okay? <laughs> Sit down for a moment, wouldn't you? Yeah. <sighs> Sometimes it doesn't even feel like I'm your maid. Ah, <sighs> anyway... Let me just quickly comb it out and you should be set. <laughs> it reminds me that you're always like this whenever I ask. A few years ago, you said you had feelings for someone, and any time I'd ask you who it was, you'd just run away. Ah, <sighs> well, I guess you can keep your secrets. <laughs> anyway, there you go. You're all handsome and ready for the night. Mistress Lincoln has given me the rest of the night, so... I'll be off duty till morning, but if you are in need of my services, you know where to find me. My room is not far off from your own. So, if you need me, just knock. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful night, my lord, and I hope this mysterious lady of yours is there at the ball as well. Hmm? Who could that be? Uh, uh, I'm coming. Uh, please, give me a moment. Uh, it's quite late into the night. Uh, uh, apologies. Uh, let me grab a sweater. Uh, is that you, Mistress Lincoln? Is there something that you needed for the preparations tomorrow? Uh, uh, huh? M my lord? 
W I I'm sorry. I did not realize that you'd be coming this late at night. I'm still in my nightgown. Uh, uh, my lord. I thought you would have retired to your chambers by now. Oh, you reek of alcohol. How much did you have to drink? Uh, I see. Well, that's not really a number, is it now? Um, you're starting to slur your words. Uh, here, uh, apologies. Um, just grab onto me and let's head to your room, all right? It wouldn't be good if they saw you here. All right. Nice and steady, one step at a time. There we go. Out the door. Uh, it's okay. Just hold on to me, all right? Are you dizzy, my lord? Uh, we'll get you settled on the sofa in a little bit, all right? Uh, come on. Let's go. There, there. It's okay. Uh, look, we're at the couch already. Here you go. Yeah, just sit down there. Are you okay? Let me grab someone to help. I won't be gone for long. Uh, hmm? Uh, well, I suppose I can take care of you alone if you need it. <laughs> yes, yes, don't worry. I'll make sure no one else knows. It can be our little secret. You can trust me, you already know. Here, how about some water? I'm sure this will make you feel a little bit better. Nice and slow, okay? Uh, careful, careful. Uh, you spilled a little. Here, let me wipe this. There you go. <laughs> let me take off your coat and such. It might be a bit uncomfortable, hmm? Uh, apologies, my lord. Bear with me. Okay? Okay, let me put this here and let me grab you some more comfortable clothes. Hmm? Alright. Uh, apologies, like, again, I, I know you're quite uncomfortable with this. Uh, Alright, uh, here's a robe and, and your slippers. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, are you also feeling a bit cold? Let me grab you a blanket as well. Let's drape this over you. All right. Um, how are you feeling now? Comfortable? Ah, uh, excuse me. Um, well, you're not clammy or breathing oddly, so at least that's okay. Um, you haven't drunken like this in, well, since it's been a while. Just, um, let me know if you're feeling nauseous, okay? Hmm, you want to lie down? Uh, well, I suppose it's fine. Do you want to lie on your bed? Here? But, uh, well, uh, well, you can't lie on your back, so... Uh, lay your head here. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I won't be uncomfortable. Besides, you used to lay your head on my lap all the time. Well, it's been a while, but it should be fine. I'll be here until morning if you need it, alright? Hmm, yeah. Just settle it there. Hmm. <laughs> it's been quite a while since we've done something like this. Are you comfortable? Mm. Okay. Okay. As long as you're comfortable, then. Is there something wrong? You usually don't drink like this unless something happens. You don't need to tell me. 
Duke Lowenthal announced... What? Lady Aaron is to be engaged with... But you have yet to even have any discussion of such matters. I I'm... Uh, no, no. There, there. It's okay. Uh, is she happy about this? Because you clearly aren't. Is there any way you can get around this? I, I, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be talking about this with you. Let's talk about something else. Hmm? Um. Hopefully, you'll be able to sleep after a while. Maybe after I spout some gibberish at you. And I'll be here, alright? Okay. Mm, let's see. What to talk about. Ah, uh, I know. Remember when your brother was still at the estate? <laughs> well, Annium and you were on the field, sparring with one another as usual. You loosened your grip, and somehow it came flying at me as I was heading to you to bring you two refreshments. <laughs> Thank goodness Annium had fast reflexes, hmm? It happened so often you gained that nickname, remember? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm surprised you can even recall it in such a state. The Long Range Knight. <laughs> it was such a funny nickname. Good thing you lost that habit when you learned to use real swords. I believe Annium still writes to you using that nickname, actually. I hope he's doing well now. He hasn't visited in such a long time. He's been a knight for a while now, hasn't he? Hmm... Perhaps you should visit him sometime, hmm? <laughs> Though, I'm sure he's busy now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you feeling any better now, my lord? Uh, a bit sleepier? How about a rub on the back, hmm? You think that would make you feel a little bit better? Ah, <sighs> anything for you. There, there. How does that feel? Good? Hmm. Okay. I'll be here for you, okay? For as long as I can, I'll be here for you. <sighs> I hope everything is settled in the end. I don't wish for you to be unhappy. <laughs> I know you probably won't remember this in the morning, but I... Hope you can find happiness with that mysterious lady of yours. Is she the same one you would mention years earlier? If she is, I'm glad you found someone to love, and I hope she has returned your affections. <laughs> she hasn't? Well, that's another step you must take then, I suppose. But I believe in you. Hmm? It's fine. You can hold on to my hand if that makes you feel better. It's okay. <laughs> it really has been such a while, hasn't it? <laughs> you want me to sing to you? Like I used to before? Ah, <sighs> if you wish it, then I will. Hmm. This is a song I heard in town a while ago. So, just, um, bear with me, won't you? I guess I'll see you when I see you When there's time to, when things settle down Are my tears see through, does my heart bleed through I learn to not need you each time I leave town You know I hate to give you up You know I'm never home enough But as I walk away The further I get The stronger I feel So independent Alone at the wheel and maybe cause I'm okay without you That's how I know that I love you for real That's how I know it's for real ah, ah, ah. That's how I know it's for real 
My lord? Are you still awake? Ah, snoring like always. Well, I hope you're still asleep. Not that you'd remember anyways. I've been in marriage talks myself, and it seems like our lives are parallel. Besides one another, yet never coming into contact. Hmm. I hope you find happiness. Sincerely, I, I do. I love you very much, my lord. I always have. I love you. Good night. I hope you sleep well, my lord. Excuse me, I'll be heading in now. Good morning, my lord. Ah, you're already up. Quite an early riser recently. Mm, your eye bags are getting even deeper. Any more and they'll be calling you young lord raccoon. <laughs> since the resemblance is starting to become uncanny. <laughs> I I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just... But why are you staying up so late? You know, sometimes after finishing up my evening duties, I'll pass by your room and see a bit of candlelight peeking out from under your door. It's becoming a bit... worrying. I wanted to bring it up, but... Ah... A formal proposal? Uh, oh, a formal withdrawal from the engagement. So, you're really still trying to break it off, then? You know your father would never go for it. Besides, it's already been a month since it was announced publicly at Lady Aaron's ball. Do you think it would really work, this plan of yours? <sighs> I don't really get it. Uh, apologies, it's not my place to say such things, but... Well, I understand it was forced upon you, but... At least you were paired with Lady Erin, of all people. You knew this decision was coming, and I even told you. You waited far too long, and you know that. I don't want to be harsh, especially not towards a person I cherish so dearly, but... It was bound to happen, wasn't it? I suspect that your trip to the Lowenthal's was nothing more than a mere check for compatibility between the two of you before it was completely finalized, if that makes any sense. <sighs> this is all nonsense. Apologies, my lord. I, I shouldn't be... Well, if you say so. Well... Speaking my mind and all, since I'm your friend, I'd say that you're in good hands with Lady Aaron, if your plan falls through. In fact, I'd say she's your best choice. Although, of course, you have many. But, well, you know, she's bright and beautiful and caring and even the Queen's niece. What else could you ask for? <clears throat> I'm sorry. I know that your heart does not belong to Lady Aaron. What was I thinking? I'm sorry. Will you continue to pursue that one maiden you spoke of before? Ah, <laughs> that's what I thought. Well, I wish you the best of luck. As I've always said, I wish that you may wed someone of your choosing. Also, apologies for my earlier outburst. I've just had a lot of things on my mind lately. <laughs> yes, I've been a little on edge. Have you really noticed? I'm sorry to have worried you. 
it's nothing. Just my family being family, I suppose. <laughs> uh, anyway, I I'm just taking up your time. Uh, let's go over your schedule for the day. Uh, hmm? <laughs> uh, no, really, I'm okay. Just uh, an off day, I suppose. <clears throat> anyway, uh, let's go over the schedule. Yes? Well, you have breakfast with your mother in the next 30 minutes. She wanted to eat outside in the garden. Uh, you scheduled a formal meeting with your father at 11. I'm assuming that's for the formal proposal? Uh, well, let's hope everything goes well there. At 12, you'll be meeting with Master San for magic training. And... Uh, ah, you have a very important meeting with Master Ronin for sword practice. It's not every day you get to train with a sword master, so be sure not to miss it, okay? Mm, uh, let's see. I believe that's all you have specifically scheduled today, so you should have the rest of the day to yourself. Uh, so, would you like to head down now, then? Best not to be late. <laughs> not that you really ever are. Mm. Alright, if you are in need of my services today, I will be a bit busy. As such, I've told Mistress Lincoln to assign a different maid to attend to you today. Alina will be waiting for you in the garden. Uh, mm hmm? Ah! Uh, I've been assigned to a very different part of the manor today. It's a very important job that's been assigned to me. Uh, mm hmm? Oh! Don't worry about it. Uh, you'll see. <laughs> uh, now let's get going before I talk your ear off, hmm? <laughs> I wish you a good day, my lord. I'll be on my way then. Manea, calm your heart. <laughs> that was tougher than I had expected it to be. I was practically unraveling there. Get a hold of yourself. You did what you needed to do. You spoke to him and you're perfectly fine. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. Whether or not the proposal goes through is none of your business. It's useless to think about it anyway. He'll be married off to a more qualified and worthy woman than I, and I'll be married. Living far, far away from the Aranoma state. Far, far away. It was inevitable. I was right all along. But why does it still hurt? Why does it bother me so? I accepted my fate long ago. Didn't I? Uh, I'm, I'm just wasting time. Let's finish packing while I still have the time. Uh, well, I suppose it's almost time to say goodbye to this place. I've lived here for ten years. It's really all I know. How will I fare living there? Ah, uh, no need to think about it, Manea. You'll know once you're there. Don't think too hard about it. Perhaps I should have told him. No, he'd be upset, wouldn't he? But then again, when I disappear without a trace, what will he think of me? Would he miss me? I was his friend, after all, and his maid, if nothing else. Ah, huh. <laughs> don't cry, Manea. He'll be happy, all the same. Perhaps it'll hurt for a little while, but he'll... He'll be in good hands. 
he'll be happy without you. Y yes. Won't he? Why do you second guess yourself so much, Manea? Uh, the carriage should be arriving soon. Perhaps I should stand outside the front gate. Uh, well, goodbye, my home. Goodbye, my lord. Perhaps someday I'll visit you once again. But for now, I will take my leave. M my lord, what are you doing here? You shouldn't be here. Y you're meeting with your father. Why are you not there? It's merely been a few minutes since the meeting should have started. There must be some mistake in the schedule. Y you should have been in the East Corridor. W why? Your father told you? Then, you know? Yes, indeed. I did trick you. And yes, it's Earl Vetrus. I've been engaged to him. I got the official letter no less than two weeks ago. No, I didn't expect it to happen so quickly either. It seems like Avari had failed to acquire an engagement with Marquise Rain. He's chosen to marry a different noblewoman. Lady Faye, it seems. She's in a much higher position than our families, and he chose to formally extend a proposal of engagement to her instead. My parents, they invested a lot of money into Avari. Her dresses, the accessories, even Avari's casual spending money was increased. As such, they lost out on an investment, and instead chose to give me to Earl Vetrus. My dowry was small, and I suppose he found me pretty enough to take me. As such, I cannot refuse. He's a wealthy man and has taken me in for a good price. My parents said it was far beyond my value, but he took it regardless. Once we are married and I am able to give him more heirs, he'll give monthly payments to my parents. It's a good deal, they told me. <sighs> but that does not matter. What of the proposal? You've been working on it for ages. It's much more important than my departure. You need to go back. N now! Your father will only be more displeased with your behavior, especially now that you've gone and ran out. Please, you've stayed up for ages. Go back. I, I, I know what I said. I, I know the chances are slim, but... Your happiness doesn't depend on this. <laughs> I, I don't understand. How does it hinge on me at all? You need to leave, as do I. P please, I, I must go. My carriage will be here very soon. I, I have to go. Don't you understand? You have a choice. I don't. There is no choice for me. Please, please go back to the manor now. Any choice but this, please. Don't make this any more difficult for me. You'll find someone to replace me. I'm merely a maid. I I must get going. They, my, my family, they'll be waiting for me. I can't be late. Earl Vatris will be there. Please, they'll, they'll get angry at me. I can't, I can't have them be angry again. I, 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 I do want to stay. Don't you get it? You know me. I want to. I... I... If I could stay here and serve your family for the rest of my life, I would. You know that. But I can't. Don't you understand, my lord? I have no choice. 
you know why I'm leaving and why I can't refuse. I, I just, I just have no choice. I've just never had a choice in any of this. I just wanted to be the perfect daughter to live up to their expectations of me. I've always been stuck following each and every direction given to me. I just... I just wanted to be a good daughter. I've always wondered why. Why did they treat me so badly? What was the difference between me and Avari? Their colors, they're always so murky. They beat me, they cast me away, they left me all alone. They tossed me up into the attic while Avari continued to live her life in a beautiful room where she could wake up and breathe freely without coughing and inhaling dust each morning. Mother and father never even batted an eye toward me. Not until they found a use for me here. Was I not also their daughter? Maybe they were right. I don't look a thing like them. I... <laughs> Maybe that's why. <laughs> And now, I have to clean up for Avari again. Now I must marry a man three times my age to pay for their luxuries, while I'm thrown away to an old man as a second wife. Nothing, nothing more than a tool again. <laughs> Maybe once I marry him, they'll... Finally accept me. Finally look my way. <sighs> You're right. Nothing would change. <laughs> Who am I kidding? They'll always view me as a tool. I never wanted you to see me like this. Why did you have to come here? Why? Why does it all hinge on me? I don't understand. I feel so weak. Why did you have to come here? I'm just a maid. I'm just a servant. A disposable person. I'm not important. Please, don't make me feel important to you. I... I can't take it anymore. Please, please don't say that. Please don't confuse me anymore. I thought I threw it all away. I thought I'd finally give it up. Fine. I accept this. I accept it all. I, I'm in love with you. I love you, my lord. I have always seen you more than a friend or a mere nobleman that I serve. You are my everything. Were my everything. I tried to stop it. I tried to stop my feelings for you so badly, but I knew deep down that I was only fooling myself. Each and every day, I was so pleased to just be by your side, being your confidant, your friend. I was content. I tried to be content. I tried. I really tried. I wanted to extinguish my dreams and hopes of ever being by your side as a lover rather than a mere servant. Our positions were all too different. You, the son, the heir of House Ladle of all things. And me, a mere maid. A hopeless girl from a noble family. Sometimes... I daydreamed about being the daughter of a Marquise or a Duke. Maybe then there would have been a some chance. Maybe, maybe you would have looked my way. Huh? Huh? M my lord, what are you doing? Uh, is this the hairpin? The one from the festival? I thought, but 
Give me a second. N no! Don't try to make me feel better. Don't pretend. Y you can't. Please. Please extinguish my hopes. Reject me. Reject my feelings. Tell me that I'm just a friend, a servant, and nobody, no one's you. Please. I rejected these feelings all my life. I'm... I'm not sure how to feel about any of this. Do... Do you truly love me as well? No! How could I ever doubt you? I... I know you. You wouldn't lie to me. I've known you all my life. When? <sighs> Was I truly such a fool to not notice this entire time? M me? Uh, I don't know. Three years after I arrived, or so? I'm not sure when it was. I just knew that I loved you. I... Uh, maybe being accidentally bonked by your practice sword too often messed up my head a little. I just... I simply love you. That is all. But... Although I'm overjoyed by this all, I'm not sure what to do now. The small chance we had, we missed that window. You're engaged to Lady Air, and I'm engaged to Earl Vetris. What? What do we do? I... It's too late, isn't it? What do we do, my lord? I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave you. I don't want to leave my home. Can we really figure something out? Even if you give your proposal to your father, my status, it's not acceptable when they've secured a marriage with someone from House Targethon. One of the big six. My house is merely an offshoot of House Elasia. Not even the main one. I don't know what options we have. No, my lord, do not suggest such a ridiculous thing. These, these personal feelings of ours are not worth it. They're not worth your title. I don't know if I can stand to see you simply cast it all away. I... I know it wasn't your choice after Annie had left. I remember how much pain you were in when he... When he left. I, I know you felt betrayed, but you understood why he left. And you steadied yourself for the role of heir. You've been working so hard. I've witnessed it every day. You worked so hard. Can you really simply throw it away? Just for me? I'm not... So sure I'm worth such a thing. You could always take me as a second wife, if anything, since you're allowed to. But it's the best option we have. What else? There is nothing. I may not be your main wife, but at least we'll be together, and you'll keep your title, right? <laughs> I knew you'd say such a thing. You've always been a loyal person, and I, I wouldn't want to drag poor Lady Erin into our mess either. My parents, well, they would wreak havoc upon me, your family. They're greedy people. Unless you offer them half your fortune to marry me, they wouldn't even accept such a messy exchange. Well then, what do we do? We're both engaged to people. We're both bound to our duties. There's nothing more for us to do. I... I know. I don't want this either. 
but what choice do we have any more? If you do not want to take me as a second wife, then what do you want? What are we supposed to do, my lord? I love you. I really do, but we... We can't just drag other people into this mess, can we? It'd be selfish. And I'd like to be selfish, but I just don't have the heart to. Even if I do love you. I'm sorry, my lord. It seems as if my carriage has arrived to take me to the Clark estate. I... I... I will always be wishing the best for you. I hope that you will be happy in your future endeavors with Lady Aaron. Don't overwork yourself when practicing your magic and swordsmanship. You always go overboard and I get worried. It was my pleasure working for you and your family all these years. I will never forget them. Or you. You're the only reminder of freedom I have left. One final request. Please don't forget me. Please. I hope that I'll remain in your heart as a happy memory. I love you. I have and always will. You are my home. Well, I've taken too much time. Blabbermouth as usual, it seems. I'll see to it that House Ladle receives an invitation to my wedding with Earl Vetris. I bid you farewell, my lord. May we meet again.